This is the Badger 24-7 Podcast with your host, Evan Flood. All right, finally brought the podcast back. Needed a little break there after traveling to Michigan State. Drove home at about 4 in the morning their time and stopped in Brookfield for some high school fall league stuff. And Big mistake there, really got burnt out. <laughs> Had to shut it down uh, pretty much uh, most of the week leading up to the Purdue game. I'm not as young as I once was, Uh, so I think going forward, just in terms of the thing that's best for efficiency for the site, bring out the podcast with the big stuff. I don't think you need game recaps. You guys are a smart audience. You don't need me ripping off stats you already know or or giving takes that you can all see for yourselves on game day, and if you really want them, obviously they're... They're on the website in written format too, so just kind of bring this out, I think, when necessary, when there's a lot of stuff to divulge into and and really break down. And obviously we have some news on a Tuesday. Wisconsin strikes on the recruiting trail. Basketball, not football. Greg Gard lands an early commitment from Lakeville North. Wing in the 2024 class, Jack Robeson. If Lakeville North sounds familiar to you, it should. Robeson is now the fourth Lakeville North alum to commit to or to play for the Badgers in the Greg Gard era. There was Nate Reavers, Tyler Wall, Nolan Winter is currently committed in the 2023 class, and now there is Jack Robeson. Seriously, at what point does the city of Lakeville just apply for residency in Wisconsin. Riley Malman, Wisconsin's redshirt freshman offensive tackle, also crossed the border not that long ago. I mean, they got to be worried at least that the state of Minnesota is going to kick them out of there and they're going to get annexed to Wisconsin anyway. But back to Robeson, this is a solid start, solid pickup for Greg Gard in this 2024 class for not just what Robeson can bring to the floor, but his connections to some of the other guys Wisconsin is in deep with, this could pay a lot of dividends. We'll start with what it means on the recruiting trail. I can't say this enough. I say it every time. Some of you are are sick of me beating this dead horse, and I get it. But you really can't overstate it in today's recruiting landscape. Getting early commits is so huge for a program like Wisconsin, especially when you're talking about a guy that plays on a shoe circuit. Robeson's got offers from Wisconsin, Nebraska, Minnesota, South Florida. But things don't really get going until the spring before your senior season. He hasn't even started his junior year at Lakeville North yet. And really, you know, the the last hurdle, the the July evaluation period where there's three weeks of coaches hitting the road and and watching these kids, that's when things really take off. I mean, you can add, you can double your offer list in those settings easily. So Robeson was going to be a guy who plays in the Nike circuit, going to have 20-plus coaches at all his games next year. Now you're Wisconsin, you can sit there and not have to worry about who else might jump in. The other added benefit, as I alluded to, he's AAU teammates with two of Wisconsin's top targets, Jackson McAndrew, a 6'8", 6'9", forward, out of Waze to Minnesota, and Daniel Freitag, a four-star point guard in the 2024 class. I don't think all three are necessarily openly or seriously discussing any type of package deal, but if it were going to happen, I'm pretty sure Wisconsin would be the place it does. You know, Obviously, it's easier to say now that Robeson's in the boat here, but that's something I would have said weeks, if not months ago as well. Freitag and McAndrew are our closer friends, not that... You know, they're not cool with Robeson or anything, but but those two are, are tied at the hip. This certainly sweetens the pot for all of them. I don't think it necessarily pushes Freitag or McAndrew over the top, but, but it's obviously an added benefit in, in a package Wisconsin's 
definitely looking to push here. And this could be a really special 2024 class for Wisconsin. You look at the talent in Wisconsin and Minnesota alone, you could get 100% of what you need right there if things fall into place. Talk about Conkinipal, Wisconsin Lutheran. Wisconsin's not backing off that recruitment, even though Robeson, uh, somewhat similar, obviously plays the, the same position. Wisconsin's all in on Knippel no matter what. I don't care if they take 10 guys ahead of them. Knippel's a take. Nick Janowski from Pewaukee is there. He's a four-star, legit top 100 kid. Everyone on Wisconsin's board has already made a visit, too, by the way. Royce Parham, a four-star forward out of Maryland. Raleigh Burgess, I uh, forget what he's ranked. Um, he's either a, a three- or, or four-star kid. Uh, might be unranked right now, um, but he's he's been to campus. I wouldn't be surprised if he took an early official as well. Jesse McCullough, you know, kid that's blowing up out of Cleveland, has already been here. James Brown, you know, four- or five-star center, depending on how you look at it, out of Chicago has Wisconsin in his top ten. He's taken two visits to Madison. So, so everything, you know, aside from Cooper Koch, who committed to Iowa, I think Wisconsin was running second there. Everything's still on the board for you for the most part, other than maybe JT Rock out of, out of Sioux Falls. Seems like Wisconsin surprisingly has fallen out of that one. I really don't know what happened there. Haven't asked. I, I would have thought the Badgers w- would have been in deep in that one, but, you know, things haven't been progressing there from, from the looks of it. But just Minnesota, Wisconsin alone, I mean, you could, you could call it a class right there with a good mix of kids who can play early, kids who are program elevators, and kids who have a chance to develop at a high rate three, four, five years down the line. Speaking of development, that's where Wisconsin fans should be excited about Robeson. Not that he's not a guy who can't play early. I would probably project him as a a three, four-year performer. But you look at his body type. He's very long and lanky for a 6'5", 6'6", wing, which makes you think he could potentially get to 6'7", 6'8". He's also a player who kind of prides himself on doing a little bit of everything on the floor. Very well-rounded kid. He'll make his hay and most people will talk about his shooting, and that's probably what he does best, but there's a lot more to his game than just standing on the three-point line. One of the most overlooked parts of his skill set is as an offensive rebounder and rim protector from the guard wing spot. He uses that length very well to even get over a top of a box out without fouling, gets off the ground quickly on those putbacks, and then just has some sneaky bounce to him to where he can come from the weak side and, and challenge a shot and enforce a miss. Also, like, uh, there, there's a little bit of scrappiness, you know, for a kid that's very raw physically. He's not Tyler Wall in the sense of he's just going to obliterate everybody that, that gets in his path. But but he'll win a good share of loose balls, like I mentioned, scrappy Uh, on the offensive glass. Then I think, you know, for a program like Wisconsin, they can use him in a variety of different ways in their offense. I think Robeson has a chance to be a three-level scorer in the Big Ten. Definitely a kid that can use his size to play with his back to the basket and score on the block. Uh, Can score going away from the rim, too, even in the mid-range. And then from a shooting perspective, probably not a guy you run off a, a ton of screens, but in terms of shooters in the Midwest, uh, he, he's one of the best. Certainly does a great job of feeding off dribble penetration. So if you compare him with a point guard who can really break down defenses, uh, I can see him really thriving. And then we all know the Badgers love defensive versatility. You know, Robeson can guard three, four spots. I don't know if he can guard the four At the next level, I've seen him do it a a little bit in the UIBL now. I don't know if that's something you can get away with in the Big Ten, but but his length will will definitely give him a chance. And, you know, he's got got good twitch, change of direction to stay on the perimeter. I don't think he necessarily has to be limited to guarding threes at the next level. 
So when you talk about value pickups and guys that are just going to contribute in a variety of ways and, and find their way onto the floor in, in some capacity, this is why I think it's probably best to describe Robeson as, as a solid pickup. I think he, d- despite the chance to develop and be a lot better down the road, I think his floor is really high for the reasons that I mentioned. I just think he's going to find ways to, to impact that team. You get a real sense for these guys watching them in AAU, especially when they're surrounded by other talent. You know, I've, I've seen him take over games as a scorer. I've also seen games where, you know, he may not score a lot, but you definitely notice his presence. I mean, starting the team isn't very deep, but they, he, he plays with four other D1 guys uh, on the roster. So you get to see a lot of different parts of him. And regardless of how many points he's scoring, he's always showing up and doing something. You notice him on the floor, even if he's not necessarily taking and making a ton of shots. And that, you know, right there, <laughs> just screams great guard type of player, right? I'm going to see if I can get Jack on the podcast. I'm actually recording this before he's announced anything. Shh. But uh, we'll go a little longer. But just in case I I don't get him tonight, I'll uh, throw a little something else here in this next segment. So I spoke with Wisconsin's Director of Recruiting, Mickey Turner, Tuesday morning to kind of get an update on where things stood with the 2023 recruiting class and and sort of just the challenges of recruiting during a coaching change. I'm writing it out right now. You could probably read the whole story, I, I would imagine, Wednesday morning. I think most of it was pretty much what you'd expect to hear. Uh, here were some of the, the bigger takeaways from my perspective, though. Starting with the class size, Wisconsin has 13 commits in their 2023 recruiting class, which seems kind of small given what you typically lose in the transfer portal and the fact that there are just still some glaring needs Wisconsin had pretty much shut it down from at least my perspective after the summer, maybe even before the end of the summer. And Turner pretty much backed that up. He said they were good at 13. They were all but done. Obviously, they still want a quarterback. But that class probably wasn't getting bigger than 13, 14, maybe 15. It wasn't until these four guys transferred after the firing of former head coach Paul Christ, and I'm talking about Deacon Hill, Marcus Allen, Logan Brown, and Stephon Bracey. Now Wisconsin's opening it up a little bit and exploring some other options. Turner didn't leave out the possibility of a two-quarterback class. Now, it won't be two high school quarterbacks. He mentioned the transfer portal as something Wisconsin's likely to explore here. He said a couple of names have already popped up. He expects even more in December. So don't be surprised if Wisconsin signs a high school quarterback and a transfer quarterback in the offseason. Obviously probably won't be anybody that you're looking at to start in 2023 as Graham Mertz is, by all accounts, slated to return for his senior season. You're probably looking at a younger guy that, you know, is okay with waiting in the wings for a year or two and, and competing with Miles Burkett for that job. You know, those are always it's always tough to get, you know, um, transfer quarterbacks who aren't going to play right away. So so I'm interested to see how that plays out if Wisconsin does end up going that route and, and who they can conceivably get. Other positions of need though, he mentioned He mentioned three. One's a big guy. Whether it's offensive line or defensive line, it can go either way. Second was a skill position player. Corner, wide receiver, maybe a combination of both in terms of of some guy who can play on either side of the ball. Third felt like more of a stretch, and and this was, you know, an, an iffy one, but 
outside linebacker slash tight end. Maybe a he mentioned uh, two names, you know, Jalen Franklin, senior tight end for Wisconsin, and Caden Johnson, sophomore outside linebacker. Two guys that played both positions in high school and, and could go either side of the ball in college. Somebody like that. But that didn't feel like a, a huge need from what he was saying to me. So hopefully I'll have that done Wednesday morning. Uh, talked all sorts of stuff. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to break it up yet. Uh, talked about NIL, talked about his new recruiting staff with, uh, I think he's got seven assistants underneath him, possibly eight, You know how that's impacting things, talking transfer portal, and of course more stuff on the 2023 recruiting class. All right, so I did end up getting Jack on the phone, and here is that interview with Wisconsin's newest basketball commit in the class of 2024. So just for starters, what when was the moment you just kind of knew you'd be committing to Wisconsin? Was it on your official visit, or was it you know even before that where you just felt like that move was right for you? Um, I mean, it was. I've always kind of known. I mean, it's 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 a place where I feel comfortable. I feel you know, like that's just the place for me to be, and and. Um, on my official visit that just reassured it and um you know going in i was strongly considering you know committing on the weekend and then you know by by towards the end i was i was ready and i i pulled the trigger and i couldn't be more happy how did the commitment just kind of go down and when did you tell the staff and what was their reaction um we were in a meeting with my it was me coach guard coach kravenhoff and my parents and um, Coach Guard, you know, gave an amazing presentation on, you know, how I would fit in and, um, you know, just acad- academics at Madison, everything like that. And, um, you know, I just, after that, I just said, you know, I'm, I'm ready to come in and be a Badger. And, you know, I'm not going to lie, I got a little emotional and, and you know, then they were they were up screaming. They were super happy, and, and it was it was a really special moment, probably the happiest moment of my life. You talked about the presentation. I know we talked about this over the weekend, but for people that may not have read it, uh, what did Wisconsin do so well in terms of pitching, how you'd fit in, and what do they just like about your game that they see translating to their system? Um, you know, they, they did a really good job just um, – you know, I, I always felt like a very, very high priority there. And, you know, I always felt, you know, welcomed and, and, you know, I never questioned that. And, and, you know, they, they see me fitting in kind of like kind of how I play right now, just as someone who can, you know, play a lot of different positions and do, do a lot of different things for them. And, and, you know, compliment a lot of the other guys who will be on the team's game and, and you know, I felt I feel com- like confident and comfortable with that. I've asked everybody this really since I think Nate Reavers committed. <laughs> Is there something about you know Lakeville to Madison that you could put your finger on? As to because you think it did, you know, at some point, not that everybody you know has to follow in those footsteps but you think at some point it would be kind of a old move that that people wouldn't make but you know guy wisconsin's even got a guy on the football team from from lakeville uh, i mean yeah. is there just something that maybe attracts you guys that, that you can put your finger on as to why it's so comfortable um you know i i think it's it's the lakeville north basketball program and wisconsin's basketball program are very very similar and you know, just the way that things are done, like how we play on the floor and how we do things off the floor and just the standards of it. Um, and it makes you feel very comfortable. It makes you feel like, you know, that it's, you know what's expected. And, you know, that it, it makes you feel good. And, and I, I, you know, my decision wasn't based off of Nate or Tyler or Nolan. Like, it was my decision. And I felt that's what was best for me. And obviously those that's what those guys felt too, coming out of our program. So... That's pretty cool. When did you end up telling Nolan that you'd be committing to, to Wisconsin and, you know, what was just sort of his reaction? Um, you know, he was he was texting me all 
all weekend like how is it how is it how is it and I, you know i was just you know, i was just like it's it's special and later saturday i committed saturday afternoon and then talked to him when i got back to my hotel um that night saturday night and uh you know i facetimed him <laughs> he didn't really believe me at first but they, you know he find i got him <laughs> he, he thought i was playing with him but no i mean he was super happy and i'm super happy and he's my best friend and for it, for it to work out for us two to play together in college you know that's i think it's going to be pretty cool Su- super excited wisconsin prioritizing you the way they did i'm sure played a part in this like you mentioned but but you know what just went into the decision to to do it now He's obviously you are giving up a lot. I mean, you only get to go through this process once. I mean, you've seen it done. I'm sure for some other guys to know that, you know, your recruitment really doesn't start till the spring, if not July, before your senior year, where, where things really yeah. get going. Uh, why commit now versus maybe taking, you know, that experience away? Um, you know, I, I just felt like now's the right time. I mean, I I knew what I wanted and and. I feel like there was no need for me to wait. And, um, you know, I think being first in the class is pretty cool too. But, um, you know, also, I mean, I've been able to be recruited for like a long time, like early in my freshman year. So I've had a, you know, it's, it's a little different, you know, as a younger kid, but, um, you know, I've been able to really see a lot of campuses for a long time now. So I just felt like I knew, and I was ready to make that decision. With Coach Gard and Coach Krabenhoft, how did they just go about recruiting you, and what was your relationship like with them that you know allowed this early commitment to happen? I mean, I I, I have a super special connection with both of them, and and Coach Shambles and Coach Oliver. Um, you know, I feel very you know close with all everyone on the staff, like, and um, you know. Coach Kravnoff was the first coach to call me ever, like the first school to ever reach out. And and ever since then, like I've, especially with him, I've had a super, just a super cool connection. And I feel like he's someone who I really look up to, like as a person. And, you know, I, I think it's going to be really cool to be able to play for him. And, you know, obviously Coach Guard, he's, he's one of the best in the business. And, you know, he, he, he does things the right way and you know I that's pretty cool and and um you know going about it like they didn't they didn't put too much pressure on me like they I stayed in you know a lot of contact with my I talked to him multiple times every week and but it wasn't too much like it, it was it was the right amount and, and I felt just super comfortable and I, I keep saying that word but you know that's that's really the main reason I feel comfortable there and that's where I think I fit in and I'm super happy about my decision you mentioned you're, you're the first one in the class what's sort of next for you just in in terms of I, I don't know how much Wisconsin talks about you know you and Jackson McAndrew and, and Daniel Freitag teaming up but but what do you kind of want your role to be in, in terms of you know, maybe trying to a bring some Minnesota guys along with you but but guys you also play with uh, in the summer and, and I'm sure have some pretty good chemistry with on and off the floor. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pressure them into, I and mean, then bug them about it, but I would love to play with them. And, and you know, we've got a, a good connection. We obviously playing with each other for Howard Pulley and, um, you know, I definitely will try to do a little recruiting with, with a lot of guys, with, you know, more than just those two. Um, but you know, I, I'm just gonna let them make their decision. So, how did you kind of just feel like Wisconsin? Obviously, it's early, uh, but but how do you kind of just feel like where Wisconsin is with them right now? Um, I mean, I think they're in a good spot with both of them. You know, we don't we don't talk about it too much. Okay. But you know, I think I think they're in a good spot with both of them. Yeah. So you will be playing with Nolan. Uh, what what's your chemistry just like with him on the floor and you know how do you guys just kind of play off each other i think i think we uh i think we complement each other's games really well um you know we we 
he's obviously a really good shooter and I, I shoot it well too and and I think we, we you know we open up that shooting ability opens up you know post ups or driving lanes for either one of us and you know we do a lot of like um, you know pick and pops and, and dribble handoffs and, and stuff like that you know all entered into him and cut off him in the post and stuff like that at for Lakeville North and, and you know we've had a lot of success doing that so I we, we really complement each other's games really really well and lastly obviously you, you can't make it official here for over a year but what just kind of got you most excited about this decision and, and what are you just sort of looking forward to most about being a Badger um just kind of you know joining the family like it's there's just the way that everyone gets along on on that team and in that program, it, it, it's really something that's special. And and you know, I'm looking forward to you know this this upcoming season. I'm also looking, I can focus on you know winning the state championship, and that's that's our goal. And you know, this brings a little pressure off of me to tell my team go do that. So you know, I'm I'm looking forward to that. All right, I'm going to uh, wrap it up there. I'll type up the interview with Jack if you can't get enough and want to see it in written form, if you're that much of a diehard, but it'll be pretty much the same as as what you just heard. Won't be anything different. Didn't leave anything out of that interview. By week, uh, not sure if I'm going to have another podcast or or not. Would like to. We'll, We'll see if something comes up where I can adequately fill... 25 30 minutes or so and and not waste your guys's time but but again appreciate you tuning in and uh if we don't see you later this week uh, i'll be back uh, after the bye week thanks again